Dear Lord, thank you for these few moments where we will strengthen our connection with you and in the process increase our communication with you back and forth. Understand the language that you use better and increase our trust in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, we will pick up where we left off. Uh, we're in, of course, Nature of Personal Reality. Chapter 5, Session 624. And then, is today's date the 18th already? That's correct. Uh, yeah. January 18th, 2012. I was about to put a period and I was like, oh wait, not school. And what was last week's lesson? I am healthy. I have I am healthy. All right. Well, we will pick up on page eighty-seven, and uh, we have read the first paragraph of the session. <clears throat> so I will reread that paragraph as we continue on into this topic. Are you folks ready? Yes. All right. Starts off with, to be healthy, you must believe in health. A good physician is a changer of beliefs. He will replace an idea of illness with one of health. Whatever, whatever methods or drugs he uses, will not be effective unless this change of belief takes place. Unfortunately, <coughs> when man became a labeler, he also made maps, so to speak, of great complexity, categorizing various diseases with greater effectiveness than ever before. He studied dead tissue to discover the nature of the disease that killed it. Physicians began to think of men as carriers of disease and diseases, which in certain terms, they, the physicians, did themselves create through some new medical procedures. The old medicine men often dealt far more directly with the patient himself and understood the nature of beliefs and the prime importance of suggestion. Many of their techniques were adopted for their psychological shock value in which the patient was quite effectively brainwashed out of the disease he believed that he had. The present medical profession is sadly hampered because of its own beliefs. Often it operates as a framework in which poor health and disease are not only accepted as normal, but the concepts behind them strengthened. Here you have again, as in psychoanalysis, a hide-and-seek arrangement in which both the doctor and patient take part. Both believe they need each other, of course. Behind this is the psychic pattern of beliefs in which the patient often assigns to the doctor the powers of knowledge and wisdom that his beliefs have taught him he does not have. Knowing otherwise, the patient still wants to consider 
the doctor omnipotent. Upon the patient, a doctor often assigns and projects his own feelings of helplessness against which he combats. The interactions continue with the patient trying to please the doctor and at best merely changing from one group of symptoms to another. Far too often the doctor shares the patient's unshakable belief in poor health and disease. Not only this, but the medical profession often provides blueprints for diseases. And the patient too often tries them on for size. This is not to say that the medical profession often is not of great aid and benefit, but within the value system in which it operates, much of its positive influence is negated. Because they are held in such high esteem, because they are held in such high esteem, the suggestions given by doctors are paid particular attention. The patient's emotional condition is such that he or she readily accepts statements made under such circumstances less critically than usual. The naming and labeling of diseases is a harmful practice that to a large extent denies the innate mobility and ever-changing quality of the psyche as expressed in the flesh. You are told that you have something out of the blue, it has attacked you and your most intimate organs, perhaps. You are usually told that your emotions or beliefs or system of values have nothing to do with the unfortunate circumstances that beset you. The patient, therefore, often feels relatively powerless and at the mercy of any stray virus that might come along. The facts are that you choose even the kind of illness that you have according to the nature of your beliefs. You are immune from ill health as long as you believe that you are. These are quite practical statements. Your body has an overall body consciousness filled with energy and vitality. It automatically rights any imbalances. But your conscious beliefs also affect this body consciousness. Your muscles believe what you tell them about themselves. So does every other portion of your physical body. While you believe that only doctors can cure you, you had better go to them. Because in the framework of your beliefs, they are the only people who can help you. But, the framework itself is limiting. And again, while you may be cured of one difficulty, you will only replace it with another. As long as your beliefs cause you to have physical problems. that is powerful information, particularly if you believe that it's true. I'm, I'm stopping there. We can make a mark here at the bottom, uh, just our 118, 2012. There's so much information that's covered in just those two pages, it's quite overwhelming. But to make a long story short, if you believe in the medical profession, then that is what you're going to work with, of course, use it. However, try to get to a greater understanding of what's going on, and that is that our beliefs are behind our problems, and to solve our problems, we need to change our beliefs. Maybe that's our sentence. That's for... it. Okay. <laughs> our beliefs are behind our problems. And to 
solve our problems. We must understand that we have to change our beliefs. Is that what I said? No, I thought you said to solve our problems we have to change our beliefs. Okay, and to solve our problems we have to change our beliefs. All right. Now that's, that's long. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 words. Our beliefs are behind our problems, and to solve our problems, we have to change our beliefs. It's a good quote, though. Um, why don't we stick with it? We'll put a box around it. Yes, it's, it's a lot of words, but it sort of summarizes up probably most of what we've learned so far. Okay. Do we have any questions? No. All right. As you can see, this is absolutely freeing. You can free yourself from many, many things here if you can truly apply this knowledge. We grow up and we are culturally conditioned. There, there is no way around it. That's the way it is. You're born into some culture. You must learn the culture and the beliefs because that's just the way it works. Once you get to the point of rationality and you are luckily exposed to some of these ideas, then you can choose what you believe and you can choose to create your reality as you go forward. Freeing yourself from what you have learned is the part that you have to do the work. I'm obviously caught up in a lot of the same beliefs of what many other people are as far as believing in the profession. I was, I was very concerned going into it because I was aware of all this before I became a nurse. And so I've tried to maintain some balance so I wouldn't get completely sucked into the, everything the doctors and medical profession or teaching. Alrighty, let's have a closing prayer here. Dear Lord, as we learn to become more healthy and in the process Increase and feel more vital, more energy, more strength, mentally and physically and spiritually. Thank you. Because we know that will strengthen our connection, increase our awareness, and give us greater abilities in order to express the wonderful miracle of your love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. All right. Let's see if this stayed on the whole time. Yes, and the battery's flashing.